Dennis Hayden on the fishbowl once again. Welcome. Sure, sure, it's good to be back. Yep, swimming around in the bowl once again. <laughs> well, I figured uh, this time around we would focus uh, specifically on Die Hard. Um, Sounds good. All right. So, question number one. Uh, last time you were on the fishbowl, we we figured out how Eddie made it to the end. Um, this time, I was wondering right off the bat, uh, recently with Alan Rickman passing and everything, um, I was wondering if you had any stories, per se, um, about uh, Alan Rickman on the shoot of Die Hard. Yeah, Alan... That was his first movie. He'd uh, he'd been to the theater and, and, and over there and uh, the fly was what the man this guy he grew. So uh, it was like his first film. So he was like you know real you know. And so we hung out a lot, uh, you know, and I kind of like was stuff like that. So uh, this is what a great guy was. He uh, uh print and he read it, you know, for work whatever it was, and uh, Rickman. But he was in his movie with a next one. He goes, You're coming over, he tells Joel, he goes, Man, this script. <laughs> Usually actors don't go around, huh? Right. Uh, but, you know, so, so I said, you know, That's a rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anyway, I did get the, uh, did the call, uh, he didn't have him come out to the Die Hard or to the meeting. I already knew Patrick, so it was so fun. I've done it for years. But they didn't know that. So they wanted, they wanted to meet me. And, and I was quite a bit taller. So, uh, you know, I stood back and my shirt. And he did. You know, so I, I didn't stand there and circle people. But when uh, we went to do the, uh, and, uh, do the thing, they put us. He was there and he looked at it. I was so much bigger than him. But they did not. But uh, anyway, uh, that was uh, Alan Rickman who suggested to Joel that I, I mean, I, so I thought that was very cool. And then, uh, Years later, I was uh, working with William Richard, and we were doing the, the Independent Man in the Iron Mask. And uh, and uh, there was a couple of roles in there. I looked at him, I said, man, Alan Rick would be perfect for this. So I, so I said, let me just give him a call. I ain't talked to him in years, you know. So I, don't know, I looked up, found his number over the side, called him. Sure enough, he called me right back, man. And, uh, and he was doing it at the time. He was, I think, directing it. And um, it was... We had conflicting uh, schedules, so we couldn't do it, you know. And he wanted, you know, he said, say things, man. He did work in my picture, whatever it was. Right. But we never got around to doing it, but that was kind of the shame of the way. Because I would love to work with him again. He was just a pleasure to be around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've been watching some of... Uh, yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been watching some of his movies recently. And, um, you know, it's interesting you say you wanted him on a Man in the Iron Mask. Because after I saw him in um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, uh, it was like he was perfect for Man in the Iron Mask. Or would have would have been perfect for Man in the Iron Mask. Oh, but, uh, yeah. The guy had nothing, you know, nothing bad to say about that guy. Awesome. Yeah, it's a shame. He leaves that world. He didn't have a talent. Yeah. He grew yeah. up in you know, the same way with me. I started out in theater out here you know, in California, and uh, I was doing dinner for 10, 12 years, you know, did a lot of theater. Right. And, uh, you know, if they would have paid money, shit, I'd, I'd probably still be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went to New York a couple, went to New York a couple of times for interviews, actually. They hired Harvey Keitel and still me to play a Midwestern. I was going, ooh, that's wrong. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love Harvey Keitel, but... You're 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 an actual like Kansas guy, like <laughs> per, perfect yeah. for, for Wild West, yeah. Well, I I guess you got it in a Wild Bell. <laughs> but anyway, that's all. All right. So uh, about Alan, that he was uh, you know a professional all the time. Every time he was there, you know, that's, he was one of these guys you had to go hunt down and find him. You know, he was ready to work. You know, that's awesome. That's really great to hear. You know, because like last time we talked, I I got a little inside scoop on how Carl Weathers really is. And that 
that was a bit disappointing. But, oh yeah. <laughs> but to hear uh, Alan. Well, Lewis, that was just with the guy. That could have been. That could have been just him. Uh, right. You know him. Could have been his acting thing. Uh, you know him just. Right. Right. Oh, this guy took the guy, and I'm just gonna like. Well, and that's basically what he did. And he was fine with it. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, he might act like he's my best friend. I was one thing. Right, right. <laughs> well, that's just great to hear. That's great to hear. You know, especially with now that he's he's gone and everything. You know, I mean, I've I've gone back and especially watched Die Hard a number of times, um, Robin Hood, uh, so many other movies that Alan Rickman worked on and was a part of. Um, I mean, even one of his last films, what was it, a uh, EBGB or something like that. CBGB, CBGB, mm -hmm. yep. Um, yeah, that was great to see him in that role. And because uh, I, I love that whole music era, um, especially like like the, the classic rock. Well, actually, I'm a huge fan of rock music in general, but cla the whole like 60s, well, really 50s, 60s, you know, 70s music scene was really, really excellent. And to see him you know, portray an actual real life person who was in the middle of all that, um, with like Iggy Pop and Blondie and, you know, the Stooges and all that. I mean, that, that was really cool to see. And, you know, the fact that he, he played it so well and with any role that he approached, he just played it so, so well. And, you know, it all started with Die Hard. Yeah, he must have, uh, I don't know, he must have done you. Yeah, something like that. Because voiceovers on and on films, he's like, I, 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 I'm looking up here. He's got 69 credits and he started 69 in. Jesus Christ, yeah. Yeah, did me. <laughs> well, you still got a ways to go. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait till I put you in, in uh in my, my uh my senior thesis project that I've been working on. <laughs> and that'll that'll I'm be ready. another another film to add to your repertoire. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've actually been, uh, yeah. I recently, uh, like I told you, uh, graduated Point Park um, a few weekends ago, and uh, I've been working on this, this script, um, which is like my, I've just decided in, the, in this second rewrite that it's, uh, it's going to be a total homage to um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and really... Um, Predator and a lot of the Terminator movies, but really Predator and you know, I would I, I'm like actually in the next rewrite I do I'm writing a uh, character specifically for you <laughs> that, All right. that I'm like envisioning you playing and It's also based on the story you told me of how you were supposed to play um, Jesse Ventura's character in, in, uh, in Predator, and I'm like, well, you know what? I'm just going to, like, make my version of Predator. I'm going to put Dennis Hayden in the role that he was meant to play. There you go. <laughs> That's just funny. Oh, go, Joe goes, man, where were you when I did Predator? Right. <laughs> <laughs> put that myself in your office. Sure. <laughs> you went and hired Jeff to be for the part. <laughs> I'm not an actor. <laughs> right, right. Um, last night I went to a combat radio uh, function. Uh, they raised money for homeless and uh, you know, and, the, and different different groups and stuff like that. Needy people. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of. Uh, they invite me to a lot of their shows. But last night they had a. Uh, they want to do one on Die Hard. Uh, uh, one of these days, but I said, "You better hurry up! Ain't too many of us left." Uh, right. Last night they were doing uh, Goonies, <clears throat> and uh, Corey Feldman showed up, whatever it was, and uh, and, uh, and some, some of the stuff guys, people like that, some of the producers was there, and then they did, you know, we had a talk and stuff, but uh, Corey Feldman, he is fucking funny, I mean, I'm telling you, I laugh my ass off this guy, he's, he's one sharp cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I always love Corey Feldman, I mean... I, I like the Corys, but Feldman was always my favorite. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it was because of more of the movies that he did, but Feldman was always my favorite, and I would love to. But get hey, Feldman after he's good after he's, he's yeah yeah the game man right.
right, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I want to do one on Die Hard. That'd be fun. I'd like to get a bunch of some of the guys back together, and uh, that'd be fun. Yeah, I would love to do like a Die Hard reunion interview. I mean, I, I still would love to right. go to um to London with you this Christmas um for that Die Hard screening. Uh, that would be amazing. And hopefully that that We'll see what happens with that. I, yeah. You know, that yeah, would be still, fun. Still a long ways off, but you know, I am I am saving around it. Yeah, yeah. I am saving, you know, my, my, my pennies just just in case. Yeah. I I am I am saving my pennies just, just in case I get to fly to London with uh with Dennis Hayden. Um, you know, because there's and I can definitely get some people to come to that thing because um, I did an interview with a, an a English rock band that's out there that's totally into all these these you know action movies and sci-fi stuff from the '80s and '90s and all that, and they would totally be down to come see Dennis Hayden at a live you know die-hard screening. But I mean, in the meantime, I would love to get. You know, a diehard reunion back together. Whoever, whoever is left and whatnot, you know that would that would be great. Um, you know, which kind of I guess leads me to my next question: um, being Bruce Willis's, you know, first big, big, big uh, movie break. Um, what was what was Bruce like? And are you are you still friends with Bruce to this day? Do you still keep in contact? Yeah, even contact with him, you know, I mean, these people change phone numbers after you under. But, uh, <laughs> but I, uh, the last time I ran into him, you know, uh, whatever it was, was, uh, you know, it was like, uh, old home week, you know. He was glad to see me, uh, and, you know, he talked my ear off. But, uh, finally, uh, there's some other celebrities in the room, whatever it was. And, you know, uh, I gotta just talk to some more of my friends over here. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he was uh, he was great, man. He was great on the set too. I mean, he was like uh, they have a big ego or anything like that. You know, he just did that uh, TV series, and then he did that Blind Date, which I think is one of the most hysterical. Oh, that zombies. movie is is hysterical. Yeah, you know, I, it's just it's you know I can relate with that movie. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I have picked up that crazy one before. That, she does not sure not drink. <laughs> but uh yeah, then so you know, when we were on the set he was uh he was always uh he was always upbeat. When he walked in in the morning or whenever he walked in, it was uh, like he had this smile on his face that just wouldn't go away. I call it a shit eating grin, you know what I mean? He right. had this grin. It was like something was funny gonna come out of his mouth when he opened it, you know what I mean? That's just the way and he was, he's very funny. I mean, he, and he, uh, we'd have, uh, downtime and, uh, there was a set of stairs or whatever it was. And yeah, it's like, it was almost like a stage. He would get up there on that thing and start doing comedy act, you know, doing his own, you know, keep us all entertained while they, while we're sitting around bored to death, you know? So, uh, yeah, he was, he, the, man, I, would, I would work with him in a heartbeat, man. And, you know, very professional and very, you know, wanting to get it done right. And uh, I ain't got nothing bad to say about that guy, man. He's very cool. Awesome. Awesome. You know, Bruce, 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 if it weren't for my dad um, showing me movies like Die Hard and and uh, 12 Monkeys and, um, and The Jackal, and just everything mm -hmm. else that that guy was in, um, I mean, Bruce Willis is one of my all-time favorite uh, actors ever. Um, so is Dennis Hayden. Dennis Hayden's right up there. Um, but um, you know, Bruce. I mean, I guess my favorite film that him and Walter worked on together was um, Last Man Standing. Um, you know, I, 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 that movie, you know, I, I saw that, like, when I was a little older, because, like, he's done so many action movies, and so has Walter, that, um, you know, you kind of have to, you know, watch them over a certain period of time, and um, I was in Blockbuster when they still existed, 
and uh, in Florida, actually, uh, visiting my grandma, and she, she was like, what do you want to do while you're down here? I'm like, I want to rent some movies, grandma, in Florida, on vacation. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I saw Last Man Standing, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I, hey, I was so close to being in that one. I actually went um, and read Four Walls or whatever it was. I don't know again, you know. And I don't know why I didn't get that one. I don't know what the hell that was about. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that uh, again, that would have been perfect for you. You especially. Um, that that whole the whole vibe of that movie was screaming like where is the, where is Dennis Hayden like you know I mean but that that movie was yeah I had that one I, I went and read for it I thought I had that one and uh, yeah. it was you know you know but I think the uh, whatever it was the casting people they had their own uh, agenda because if it had been Walter I wouldn't even have to read for him. he just said yeah no, right that's the way so. Well, too, so, so many of them made me You know what I mean? Right, right. And so, you know, I think they had somebody, I think they'd already had a cast, but they had to go ahead, they had to go ahead and see Walter's friends, you know. Right. That happens a lot. Right. So, 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 so goes, you know, the whole, the whole Hollywood, hey. the whole Hollywood movie making process. Maybe you need that book. Yeah. yeah. I mean, see so many actors, uh, you know, whether you're going to hire them or not, which is, you know, like, whatever. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that, that, so, so many of Walter's stuff is, is, um, just timeless. Uh, you know, I mean, like, everything he's, he's done is, is fantastic. Um, you know, like even his most recent movie with Stallone, um, what was it? A uh, bullet to the head. Um, you know, that, that movie was, was, you know, even while Stallone is like, was in his mid sixties or whatever at that point when he, when he made that a few years ago, um, he still like Walter proved that, you know, you don't need a huge budget to, make an awesome action movie all you need is like the right stars and, and the guns and the explosions to pull it off like but uh yeah you know they're gonna do a die hard here one at the room or whatever it is a die hard prequel yeah i don't know how they, how they get bruce willis and they have it on bruce willis's page so why in the hell then why is Anyway, that, that's kind of strange, but anyway, I guess that's Bruce. They need to just do uh, the Die Hard. Yeah, he's one of the So this, so they did five of them, right? So yeah, six, yeah. I'm supposed to start. Yeah, I was going to say they need to do the uh, the next Die Hard sequel where Eddie comes back. That's right, Eddie's Revenge. Right, right. It's like like if you can't. If you can't make a totally Amen. new idea, Amen. go back, go back to the beginning. Eddie's Revenge, exactly. So yeah. uh, they mentioned that again on Combat Radio on the show that night. They had the guy at Combat Radio, and Peter Dittmar, he's always mentioning that. So Dan Dennis is going to be going to be Die Hard <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. I'll, I'll write it. I'll totally write it. I'll, I'll I'll write Die Hard Eddie's Revenge, and it'll be I'll have you I'll have you kind of like. Yeah. Um, uh, like like uh, Bill Mosley in in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two. You'll have the the metal plate in your head, and you know the you'll 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 be trying to get some Martin. nuclear bomb or something. <laughs> hey, why not, man? You never know. I mean, they, they, yeah. they, 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 all, and I, yeah, like I said, I I start a few years ago just joking around on the radio show about it, you know, and. Uh, and every now, like I said, now they, they automatically mention whenever I show up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'll write it. I'll totally write it. Like I love those movies. I I would love to write a Die Hard. Uh, Die Hard. <laughs> <movie>. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good one. 
Yeah, we'll we'll get uh, yeah, Walter to direct it. Yeah, you'd be good. Yeah, you'd be good for that. Probably get Walter to direct it. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a done deal. Done deal. Yeah, he's um, a, he's. I'm gonna start brainstorming right. right now, <laughs> and uh, and I'll, I'll get I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I got uh, I got my my Skinwalker script, which is which is uh for you, <laughs> a uh, character in there oh. specifically for you. Um, and you know, I would, I would, uh, it needs, it needs a few more rewrites, but whenever it's, um, when I, when I feel it's ready to be viewed, I would love for you to, um, to, to take a look at it and just, you know, give me some notes and let me know what. Oh you yeah. Want. I love to read shit. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Cause I've basically, um, taken the the tone of Predator and actually watching a lot of Walter Hill movies like Last Man Standing and um, and getting like kind of the visuals for where I'm going with this script. And um, it, it's, it's a lot of like visuals, kind of like the setting of Last Man Standing, but more like the tone of what Predator kind of was and um you know the character that i'm kind of like envisioning you playing uh, and i'm, I'm writing f specifically for you is um is like is a is a general um it's kind of like he's he's one of the antagonists but not like the main antagonist but um in the next few rewrites i do he's gonna have a lot more than he already does have now but um, he does get a gruesome end in the end, uh, oh, wow. but um, it's, it's it's definitely like a character that is totally for you, and I'm I'm writing it for you. So <laughs> good. Yeah. All right, all right. Enough is enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying this, but I said the rich part didn't come with it because I said I always got killed. I could never <laughs> ask for money. You know what I mean? Right, right. You know, dead guys can't ask. Right. That's what well, you're not you, choosing that on me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> wow. Well, you're you're in there. You're in there basically till the end. Um, cool. So it's not oh, it's wow. not like a quick death or anything. Like you're you're definitely in there um, for a good bit, and um, and it's just totally. I'm, I'm writing it for you. Um, it just I would definitely. Whenever it's finished, I've taken like a break from it right now, and like I'm focusing on some other stuff to kind of like clear my mind. Um, but yeah, I'm I I'm, I got some projects for you, Dennis. <laughs> that I would I would just love for you to take a look at. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a over Walter's old schedule right here right now. Exactly. Yeah, that yeah, that, that's another person I would yeah. like to, to get on the fishbowl, is, uh, is Walter. Well, just call up the uh, Writers uh, Guild or whatever it is and tell them you uh, want to get a hold of his uh, agent or his manager or whatever it is and, uh, and leave a message. You know, I'm totally going to do that. I have a, I purchased IMDb Pro, um, you know, for for my, my podcast um, purposes and um, you know, I, I'm definitely going to do that. Uh, yeah, because Walter, again, another one of my all-time heroes. I mean, um, the the Alien movies have been a huge influence on me, and um, it's like I actually, because of Neil uh, Blomkamp, um, I'm I have like in a kind of like a, a Alien AVP kind of reboot idea stirring um that if he can do it why can't i you know um but yeah i mean walter walter is a uh, really really great stuff i mean his his screenwriting stuff and his directing and producing i mean everything that he's touched has just been timeless i mean um 48 hours another 48 hours yeah 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 i love those and uh, Wild Bill Hickok is even, uh, you know, they, when 
third script, it was the original script, it was fucking brilliant. It was like, I was going to this is fucking great. Well, so then we went and shot the movie, and then they got, the producers kept adding stuff, and wanting to do different stuff, and stuff like this. Anyway, it turned, didn't turn out to be the movie the script was. And I was like, you know, I don't know how you could screw something up. It was that good in the beginning. You know, I mean, everybody that read it got on board because it was just a great script. And then when we saw the screen, everybody was looking at it going, well, where did this movie come from? I mean, it's not that it's a bad movie, but it didn't make it right. or anything like that. But the original script, Walter wrote, I guarantee you, would have been a hit. You know what I mean? I can read a script and say, well, I read Die Hard and I looked over and went, this is going to be a big fucking hit movie. Man. And uh, even when we were, I uh, walked through the uh, 20th century lot one day and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and John McCarran and uh, and uh, they under the studio over there where it was just so hey man you want to see a you know rough cut of Die Hard <laughs> I said sure why not so we went to a little screening room whatever it was four five of the room and uh, watched uh, the first cut of Die Hard and, and a lot of the special effects were in and I like that so and, uh, we all walked out and everybody looked at one another and said, uh, and, uh, Joe Robert, and he goes, hey, how does it feel to be in a hit movie? <laughs> awesome. But it had a hit written all over from the right. red to, to the rough cut, to, you know, to the box office. It was like, you know, it just, you know, Action Jackson was that way. It was a great script. It went, yeah. You know, they, you know, that's another book uh, I forgot to do, you know, uh, you know, is, you know, they, Craig Baxley, I mean, you know, this guy started out as a stuntman, you know, and his father was a stuntman, and, uh, and a second director, a second director, a writer, and he's, he's, a, he's incredible, too, I mean, these guys are not working, that's what kills me. Oh, I know, you know? that's why that's oh. why I liked uh, the new Mad Max movie oh, so much, right. mm -hmm. because um, George Miller... I think uh, he said that Craig Baxley did second unit for a Predator. Right, well, there you go, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did all that. He's, he, was, he was the man on that part of the show, too. And I, I've been watching the shit out of Predator. Like, they, they've been playing, like, that movie on uh, on Encore. And for my, like, my inspiration with uh, when I was writing my, my senior thesis project this, this past semester, I would have Predator and Predator 2 on in the background. And there is so much in, in it, that goes into... Predator. Well, Kevin, Peter, Kevin Peter Hall is a real good. Ray, who was from uh, Penn Hills, Pittsburgh. Penn Hills, Pittsburgh. <laughs> right. Well, he, him and I used to hang out a lot, or was in the go to studios and sh What was uh, What was Kevin? He stopped by and I go, "Come on, fucking super dude, man. He's fucking tall. He's so goddamn tall." <laughs> I said, "I gotta hang out with you. Because you're the only friend I have." <laughs> 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 so yeah, we used to hang out. He was a he's he's just a fucking sweetheart guy. Man. He was, you know, he had, didn't have a bad bone in his body. That's great to hear. I mean, I was watching like the special features on Predator and like seeing seeing him, you know, behind the mask in a sense. And um and you know, Kevin Peter there I don't think I've had a a like a more favorite um, character actor than Kevin Peter Hall. I mean, Andy Serkis is great, you know, but, like, everything he does is under, like, the CG mapping, you know, and everything Kevin Peter Hall did was, like, that's the, that is him, you know, not that, you know, everything um, Andy Serkis does right. isn't him, but it's, like, you're actually seeing Kevin Peter Hall portray these these characters at under the makeup. Like there's no CG. And do all that makeup and do all that. Right, right. It's like I, I, I you got to be a special human being to do that kind of stuff. Exactly. Stuff. I mean, they have to run, they have to run water tubes and stuff, and pump water through that suit that he wore. You know, what I mean, to keep him cool. Right. And you, you know, when I mean, you're stuck inside this thing for 12 hours a time or whatever, you know, it's like, damn. You know, I'd be pulling this book, get me out of here. <laughs> right, I guess that's why uh, Jean Claude Van Damme passed up 
on being the predator the first time. Um, oh, yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. But no, I think Kevin was so much better. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, that he was, that he was, that he was, that he was against fucking Arnie and, uh, right. you know, it was, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was a perfect match. That was some real. It, it really yeah. was. And it's like, you know, I, I'm such a diehard um, Arnold, diehard Arnold Schwarzenegger fan. Ha uh ha. -huh. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I really have to, like, the Terminator movies are a given, but um, really, when it comes to Schwarzenegger, putting like his two, his two all-time best films side by side, I would it would have to be Predator and Total Recall. Um, those I like, agree. Those two movies with him in it are just so, so like undeniably good. Um, I watched uh, my son when he was growing up as a kid. He, he was movie. At the time, he was like, you know, six, seven, eight, ten, nine years old. He watched that all the time. So I used to always watch that. I was like, Man, this is a good movie, you know? So no wonder he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was it? Uh, Predator or Total Recall? Yeah. He loved that movie, man, Total Recall. But yeah, it's a good one. I haven't watched it for a while. Yeah, you know, you know, but, like. My, if it weren't if it weren't for my dad showing me Total Recall at age five, uh, I would not be yeah. the man I am today. Yeah, I started. That's what I did. Adult. He's about five or six years old. I was start showing Total Recall like that. He was up there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My dad is not the only like parent out there that did this. All right. No, no. <laughs> All right, good. Then like, oh, no. I, I, I oh, know no. I know what I need to do with raising my son. Age five, total recall. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, as soon as they, as soon as they figure out the Santa Claus thing, die hard. Right. It goes, it goes, uh, <laughs> die hard, predator, <laughs> total recall. Um, like, last man standing, like, command, all, all of it, all of it, just throw Throw him into the into the the wolves den with with the action and and Arnold and Dennis and Bruce Willis and Stallone and, and all 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 the great ones that really it's like th there has not been a better age for action movies than the eighties and nineties. It's the truth. I mean, you know, like you know now they've made like John Wick is pretty fucking amazing. Um, I have to say, um, seeing Keanu like back as as just the, from the in the hitman genre, um, like that movie was pretty fucking amazing for being what it was, and showed that you know even in the two thousand tens, you know you can still make an awesome action movie and have the sole purpose of the movie being nothing but an action movie. Um, but, I know... I, I didn't get the one, uh, the, uh, the action movie, who was the one, the Road Warriors, or whatever it was called? It was uh, out there, though. Is that Road Warriors? Road Warrior? Yeah. The the second Mad Max movie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's Road Warrior. Yeah, the one that just came out. Oh, Fury Road. Yeah, yeah, but I heard... Fury yeah. Uh, Tom Hardy. I didn't get to see it. Okay. I, you know, I, that's all stunt guys and no CGI. And, yeah, yeah, that's and, what uh, I was going to say. Like, well, I was up for the awards and stuff. I probably should be out on DVD. I need to pick that up. Yeah, it's out on Blu ray now. Um, yeah, that's what I want to get one. Uh, that, that movie was pretty amazing. Um, that, also, right. that also showed that you can still you can still make an awesome action movie also and also continue um a series that you know has been absent from cinema for over 30 years and and bring it back and have it be just as impactful and relevant as it was 30 years ago and george miller i feel got totally robbed at the oscars um not that the revenant was a bad movie or anything 
but I really felt that um, Fury Road deserved uh, the best director um, Academy Award this this past year because there's so much in Fury Road that George Miller did um, that I feel makes it the, the obvious choice that should have gotten the Oscar. And, um, you know, because, like, my teacher showed me a YouTube video of this that only kind of, like, reinforces what I'm saying, and that is um, George Miller um, shot every single frame of Mad Max Fury Road in center frame, which basically, when that translates to the screen to, with the audience viewing it, um, since every single shot in that movie is shot in center frame, it directs the eye to exactly where it's supposed to go um, on the screen. So, like, where, you know, you go see, like, a Michael Bay action movie and stuff is, like, all over the place, and you have no idea, like, where to look um, for what you're supposed to be seeing, um, Fury Road, like, every second wow. of that film... Like, you're looking where you're supposed to be looking, so literally you can't take your eyes away from it the whole time. Hey, man, that's just, you know, that's a, that's a good learning thing. Yeah, yeah. And again, all, all stunt guys doing all this stuff for real. <laughs> like, like they have guys, like, uh, like rigged to, uh, to vehicles on, like, balancing beams, like, going down, picking people up from other vehicles, like like holding like chainsaws and stuff. I mean, it's it's a wild ride, <laughs> wild wild ride. Um, but really really entertaining also. I did one thing to see the stuff guys. I did one in uh, Philly with a Jerry Trimble called One Man's Army. Yeah, that's a and, great movie. And uh, yeah, I, I actually wrote most of that movie. You know, uh, uh. <clears throat> I got that guy in it with the, uh, the writer, and he was a cripple. And then he got cold feet. He, about doing you know, like, because he got cold feet and said, I, I, I can't act, and I can't do it. So he, they called me and said, Then you fly over here and play this bad guy. And I said, Yeah, I said, sure. So I hopped on a plane, flew over there. And I uh, walked, and he goes, Obviously. To, and he throws the script across his big table and slides in front of me and he goes, you'll have to rewrite it. I'm like, man, that's weird. Just come over here as an actor and I'll rewrite the script. <laughs> <laughs> so I did, I rewrote it and I just overwrote the bad guy part so much, whatever it was, that, they, that, uh, that uh, I threw out most of it and, uh, and rewrote it so, so that the, the other guy, Jerry Kernel, was the star. You know, it's like the bad guy was the star of the movie when the writer wrote himself in the bad. You know what I mean? He over right, right. So, so uh, I got rid of all that good stuff and it became a comedy. Right? No, no, I'm, I'm telling you, they uh, I'm brutal. Curious. I mean, they think, well, you see, jump, you see somebody jump off a cliff onto a moving truck. Right. He jumped off a cliff right. to a moving truck. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. There's, there's no. They can pop, but there's, there's no pads on the ground. I mean, when they hit the fucking concrete, they jump off the building jump off the buildings one time. I mean, he jumped off four or five times. I, mean, I know he, but I mean, they just, you know what I mean? It's like, like the pay is so much better than they'll literally break their bones for. Right, right. It was kind of, you know, not the equipment they used was like, you know, just primitive, you know. But uh, they, they do some action, you know, tell them. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's again, like, the stuntman... Act off the... Yeah, exactly. Like, the stuntman, like, really doesn't get enough credit anymore. Um, just like, kind of, the makeup effects artists are going underappreciated. Um, you know, because people are, are deciding, uh, you know, we're either going to switch to using, like, mainly CG... Or, you know, taking all the fun out of actually blowing shit up for, for a living. You know, it's like, 
Like I was recently watching Commando, another one of my favorite Schwarzenegger movies, and and that movie is nothing but explosions, you know, and 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 all I mean all the stunt guys in, in that movie, you know, and really every mm-hmm. every every action movie of the eighties and in nineties was like just, it, but especially like the the Road Warrior movies. Um, th- those were nothing but stunt guys doing stuff uh, that met with the Mad Max movies. But, um, you know, it's like, I really feel that, like, we need to, we need to bring back, um, you know, some, like, movie monsters. We need to bring back, uh, you know, makeup effects. We need to bring back um, actually, like, utilizing what exists in the movie industry of creating an illusion and and that's that's you don't always have to go to cg to to do that um you can you can actually use pyrotechnics and explosives and guns and you know makeup effects and all that you know to to create you know just a cool a cool sequence in a film that you know maybe usually cheaper to do certain stuff certain stuff not all of it but certain stuff and it's just like you know the fun of like watching the movies that you starred in and bruce willis and schwarzenegger and stallone and even dolph lundgren you know and all that um in the 80s and 90s was like getting to see like all this shit get blown up all this you know just like again back to predator like the the scene where um after what should have been your character uh, gets killed, Blaine Jesse Ventura's character and uh, Bill Duke, you know, finds the predator standing over um, Blaine's body, um, and he just unloads, you know, the minigun wow. <laughs> on the jungle, and, and then right, and then uh, Schwarzenegger and the rest of the team shows up, and it's like literally five minutes. Of like just blow, annihilating like jungle, you know. And it's it's like, oh, that was a good thing. He was scared shitless, man. Right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> like you know, but it's like it seems like that. That it's like why why can't we do stuff like that anymore? You know, like like we should be encouraging more stuff like that to happen in, in, in movies, I feel, you know, cause like that, that, that movie, like, like, but I, right, right. That's why we have writers like, that's why we have writers like Sam Fish to, to, uh, <laughs> pop out the doldrums and send us in the right direction. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You best believe in, in, uh, the script I'm writing for you. There is a huge, huge shootout scene. <laughs> Um, but yes, I, I am, I'm actually told by my, my screenwriting teacher that I need to do a search in final draft, um, on, on this one script I was working on for, um, explosions. Cause I was it, using it, like, I remind me of uh, the, uh, the jungle scene kind of reminds me of shoot the glass. Right. Right. And die hard. Right. But right. Just right. Kept shooting the glass and the flying. And Bruce was going like, geez, fucking crap. <laughs> right. Exactly. And that's a great okay. scene. Yeah, that was too funny. <sighs> the explosion scene uh, when Bruce Willis drops uh, the C4 um, with the computer down the elevator shaft. Oh. Oh yeah, I saw that in the uh, in the in the in that rough cut, whatever it was, and they didn't even have the uh, basically the the sound to it, you know, and. Uh, when that thing went down here and went off, I was thinking to myself, I said, that's going to come back up that shaft. And boy, we I mean, it, you know, it, I jumped in the seat when it did, you know, and he's like, whoa, it did come, you know. Yeah, that was, that was pretty, that was pretty good one. That was a good one. That, that I think is my favorite explosion in the, in the movie. Um, also, yeah, having, I definitely, yeah, yeah. That, 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 there's also how McTiernan uh, shot that sequence, um, which also just adds to the entire 
uh, first and third Die Hard experience. Um, is those those both Die Hard one and three? Um, it's it's so hard to like choose which one I like more because um, they're they're and when it when it always comes down to I can't decide you know I can't decide if I like Die Hard or Die Hard with a Vengeance more and it always I always end up like having to do a fifty fifty and put them like side by side because they really are like a part one part two anyways even though it's like the third in the entry into the series. Right. But, um, you know, there's, there's moments in Die Hard 1 and Die Hard with a Vengeance that just, you know, I, I can't help but be like this movie is, or these movies are so undeniably fucking good that, that it's like I, I can never get tired of watching them. It's like you have a bad day, Go watch John McClane kill some people and, and kick some ass and and you'll feel better, you know. <laughs> like it's you know, but but Die Hard One, um, you know, there's there's a lot of moments in there that you know I, I find myself now that I've literally seen it like over five thousand times in my lifetime. Um, it's it's like I still see stuff. I still see. I'm like I still see. In there that I that I thought I I seen it all, and then I'll right. pick little nuance or something that, that but I was like, oh wow, yeah, yeah okay, now that makes sense. Right, right, and there yeah, and there's I cool. have like sequences I look for that um that I'm like that was just brilliantly shot, um like uh, the sequence where Bruce Willis um gets caught by uh, oh, the the two guys um, before he throws the one dude out the window. Um, and it lands on the cop's car. Um, like right. That sequence where the, the two guys catch him and um, he shoots the one guy right off the bat. Um, and then the other guy is like chasing him underneath. Like he's on top of the table and Bruce Willis is like under the yeah. table just like maneuvering, you know, in any way he can, you know, to like, like zigzagging basically. Um, to avoid being shot the way this dude is like shooting at him from on top of the table. And I'm just like realistically thinking to myself that 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 is why Bruce Willis is who he is because like like that what people don't seem to realize is that like there's several movies that really set the tone on like what, action movies are today and, and die hard total recall and um and uh and uh predator really like set the tone on um on on what those movies are today and um i mean realistically i i, I always say that in the first die hard john if it weren't for bruce willis portraying john mcclane in the first die hard um, we would not have realistic action movies today. Because um, I really feel that Bruce Willis as John McClane in the first Die Hard, like we've had over-the-top action heroes, but it wasn't until Die Hard number one that we got introduced to kind of like the average Joe person who's yeah. also like a tough so becoming the big action hero, and as big as Arnold or anybody ever, right? Stallone, or any of them. I mean, he is. Yeah, that was that. I agree with you on that. Yeah, it, it's, it's it's the truth. I mean, that's why Bruce Willis like went on to do everything he's he's done since. Um, but yeah, I'm. Th those movies are so so great. Um, you know, I mean, I, I even like the new diehards, um, n nowhere near as much as one and three, but, um, they're, they're enjoyable, you know, but. Yeah, I sit down, I sit down one of these days and just, uh, binge out, just watch all the space out in a row, you know? Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta get the, uh, the, the 
Blu-ray Blu-ray box set that they have uh, with all all five of them. Right. Yeah. Well, it's about time for lunch, man. <laughs> I got you. Well, I'll I'll let you go then, and uh, and I look forward to our next interview and our next chat. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that um, I am planning on taking a trip out to uh, California in um, the August uh, September time period this year. Oh, and cool. Whenever I'm out there, I would love to meet up with you and, and chat and shoot the shit. Oh, yeah, definitely. Send me any scripts you're writing, uh, you know, I'd love to read them. And, uh, you know, I can throw some ideas at you, too. So, uh, awesome. Keep awesome. in touch, man. It's great talking to you. You, too. You, too. Definitely. Definitely. All right, man. Got a fix bubble. All right. I'll see you on this. Yep. See you on this. Thanks for that. Yep. yep. Thanks for uh, swimming in the bowl. <laughs> yeah. Water was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks again. Bye. Yeah. Take care, Sam. You too.